Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a card as part of the Newton's Nook Designs April release and this first stamp set that I'm sharing with you today is called Delightful Doxies. I'll have a video and a card to share with you for each of the new sets this week so be sure to check back and each of the sets will be um, given away as part of the new release blog hop and so I will leave you a link to my blog where you can join up on the blog hop and leave a comment on all the designers blogs for a chance to win the new sets. So this first set was inspired by the Christmas or holiday themed doxy set that was so popular among Newton's Nook fans and so now we have a general doxy set. And on today's card I'm actually going to end up using three of the four different doxy images and all of the doxies have um, some ties around them so that uh, strings tied around them so that you can incorporate the kites or balloons into them and then there's a little doxy who's sitting who could also be made to be holding those in his mouth. I'm going to be doing some watercoloring with the doxy images and so I have a piece of 140 pound Canson watercolor paper that I've cut with the Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die and I'm going to be stamping out a seam from the doxies and I will be stamping it in VersaFine ink and then clear embossing it. This will give me a really crisp black impression that's slightly raised and is perfect for watercolor. You could skip the clear embossing, but I just wanted to give it a little bit more definition, and so I went with the embossing. VersaFine ink, though, is waterproof, so as long as it's dry, you can do all the same techniques that I'm doing today. I wanted to originally just stamp one doxy, but then when I set it out, I just felt like the sky was, or the, you know, the area of the card was not full enough. It does eventually turn into a sky. And I was thinking of having the balloons instead of the kites in this instance because I wanted to use that you lift me up sentiment. There's a lot of great sentiments from the set and they have some um, puns incorporated into there. And I thought that it would make a little bit more sense for the balloons to be lifting the doxies into the air than the kites in particular. So I went with the balloons in this instance. I think the balloons would look excellent on a birthday card too, of course, but mine's just a little bit more general, a nice encouragement card to send to a friend. So I started by stamping out the two doxies, and then I wanted to make sure that the balloons would fit before I filled in with any more. I knew that I would have it such that there would be an ombre effect eventually and that these doxies were going to be in a sky. As I go, I heat up the embossing powder and emboss the different images. So um, I put the embossing powder over the dogs and the balloons and then heat set it. Then I'm going to keep moving on and so that way everything is set and I'm not accidentally brushing powder off or something in that instance. This last doxy winds up being stamped partly off the paper in order to make it fit, but I just thought that having three of them instead of two was made a little bit more sense. You might want to be careful as the um, VersaFine ink is a very sticky ink, and so if it's on your mat, it will stay wet for a long time and can spread throughout the card. So having a wet towel on hand or even a dry towel on hand just to wipe that away is super helpful. As I continue with this embossing, I use my powder bag, my powder tool, more than once because um, I continue to manipulate it and get, you know, uh, I could possibly get uh, static on the base and so I just want to make sure that um, the embossing powder works perfect each time. I'm going to be doing some masking on the card because I want to create a watercolor background and then have all of the um, doxies and balloons on top. And it would have been a lot to either fussy cut out all these images or mask off all these images in a traditional paper masking sense. So I'm taking this fine line fluid masking that I picked up at Butterfly Reflections Inc. It's a masking fluid pen and I'll be sure to leave a link to this as well. And basically you just cover everything you want masked in the liquid and then you let it dry and you can peel it up later. This is my first time using this and um, some tips and suggestions would be it does come out a little bit faster than you might expect so you definitely have to kind of get used to the flow so that you're not putting out more than you want. You do want to make sure you have a nice even coverage over everything and it does have kind of a strong smell so it would be a great idea to have your area ventilated. Once I've covered all the image which is quite time consuming but in the end I think that it's worth it because it really gives a unique effect. 
I set it aside for like about half an hour to dry because I have some really large areas masked and I wanted to make sure this technique would work because of all the time I'd already invested in the card. And then I'm ready to do my watercoloring. And I have my Koi watercolor sketch box set here. And I'm going to be using the two different blues to do a little bit of a fade or an ombre effect with some darker blue at the top and fading out to a lighter blue just to kind of uh, add to that idea of fa things feeling like they're floating. So I sprayed my paper to make sure that the water would be pretty free flowing and create a nice watercolor effect. And then I just started layering color on. What I'm going to do is keep everything pretty wet so I get that very, you know, artsy watercolor effect, but I'm also going to layer the color. So after I put some color on, I hit it with my heat gun to dry it off. I was a little bit afraid of how the masking fluid might react to being heated, but it didn't seem to bother it. I don't know that I'd spend, I, you know, a long time with the heat gun on it, but a little bit of time drying the watercolor was okay. Once I had the watercolor, the first layer dried, it allowed it me to go back in and add a little bit more color and get more of the gradation that I wanted. And again, I'm just going to continuously spray and wet the paper to make sure that the water color stays flowing. Once I have the base color laid down, I decide to do some flicking of watercolor on there just for some added interest and to add to the artistic effect. And because I'd gone through all the trouble of masking it off, I wanted to make sure that the masking would truly be appreciated. It would be much harder to paint around the doxies and still have the splatter effect. So um, you could, you know, just paint the blue sky around all of your images and that might be slightly less time consuming than putting on the masking fluid. It's kind of your choice, your call, you want to experiment with that kind of thing. But, you know, since I was going to go for a super artistic look, I wanted to do this flicking on as well. Once I have a sufficient amount of watercolor layer that I like the way that it is, um, the way it's finished, I decide it's time to remove the masking fluid. When removing the masking fluid, you simply just peel it off. It's like peeling, you know, dried Elmer's school glue off of something. But it doesn't rip the paper easily like glue would. However, it can if you don't go too slow. So, if you, sorry, if you go too fast. So take your time because, you know, now that you've put all this work into it, you certainly wouldn't want to rip anything. And I actually do get a little bit of ripping on that balloon there, but I am able to cover it up in the final card and you don't notice. So, you know, you can fix it if you do get a little bit of tearing, but, you know, go slow, take your time, and you probably won't experience that problem. So you can see there's that pile of all the little um, glue as once it came off or the masking fluid once it came off. And there were a couple of areas that accidentally got masked off that didn't need to be there part of the sky. So I'm just going back in with my blue watercolor from the sketch box and adding in some to just make it all look consistent. I'm sure that with enough experience and time, I wouldn't have that as much, but I was getting used to the flow of this masking fluid. Now, as I continue with this video, it's going to be one of my longer videos because there's a lot going on with this card and lots of layers and stuff. So... Um, be sure to, if you're um, not as interested in the next coloring beat piece, just to skip ahead to the end and make sure that you find out how to enter to win this stamp set. But I'm going to be using my Inktense pencils to color in the images. I started by just layering on this light brown because I thought it was an appropriate color for doxies, but then I found that it wasn't really giving a lot of dimension. When I layer on Inktense pencils, I only add color to where I want the darkest part of the image, so that way it creates a natural highlight because the Inktense pencils will usually stay darkest wherever you lay the actual pencil down, and then you can just kind of pull the color out into the areas you want to stay lighter. With Inktense pencils, once they dry, they are permanent. They are not like traditional watercolor, which usually you could always add more water to and reactivate it. But with Inktense pencils, once it's dry, it's dry, that's the way it is, and it's really difficult to change up the color or pull any color off. And then in that sense, it also allows less room for mistakes because even if you add a lot of water, the color won't fade as much as it would with traditional watercolor. So you, um, I recommend a little bit more practice with them. I will move on to explain how I actually finish up the doxies later, but first I'm going to show you the coloring with the balloons. For the balloons, I decided to make them all one color to keep things simple. 
and I'm going to lay the color in, in the bottom left corner of all the balloons and then pull it out. This will give a little bit of a shadow, make sure that it looks rounded, but I also want to make sure that the balloons look a little bit transparent. And the way that I'm achieving that is by making sure the lightest purple is significantly lighter than the darkest part. And um, that will add a lot of extra depth and interest to it. So I layer on a lot of color in the bottom left corner. I get some water on the area with my water brush. Then I take some of the paint that's on the brush and put it on my hand instead so that um, not as much color spreads and it creates a much quicker fade than you ordinarily would get with the Inktense pencils. So if you feel like you have too much color in your brush, um, you can have a napkin to the side to wipe it off, but I usually just wipe it off my hand because that's easier for me. And I don't mind getting paint on my hands because you can just rinse it off easily. As I continue with the doxies, I found that by adding the slightly darker brown color in, I was able to get some more interesting shadows. And so when I painted the next two dogs, I added both browns at one time. I find that it's a little bit easier to get blending with Inktense pencils if you add both colors when you're in the pencil stage, as opposed to trying to add colors once you've added water. As the Inktense pencils are permanent when dry, as mentioned before, when I went in to add the darker color to the doxy that was already colored, it was less of a blended effect and more of a layered effect. And so, you know, get better results if you do it during the pencil stage when they will blend as opposed to sitting on top of each other and then, you know, just getting a slightly different effect. So as you know, as you experience, uh, experiment with your Inktense pencils, you'll kind of figure out what works best for you, but that's just my general tip. And so now I have all of my doxies colored in, a little bit of shadows with that darker brown, and that's going to be pretty much it for the card today. I do fill in the noses with a black pen as opposed to the watercolor, just to make sure that it was a nice solid black. And... I am going to mount this on some blue card stock to pull out the blue in the sky and then put it onto a white card base. And once I had finished that all up, I did decide to add a little bit of finishing detail with some glossy accents. I recently added my glossy accents into this fine line, fine tip bottle. And I find that it just gives me a little bit better control with the glossy accents, although you do have to squeeze it a little bit harder than you would your traditional glossy accents bottle. So if you have something like if you have arthritis or something like that, you might find it a little bit more difficult. But um, I like the control that it gives me over the glossy accents, and so. I'm just going to add that to the hearts on the balloon. I thought about coloring the entire balloon, but then I thought that that would take away too much from the doxies, and so I just add that little bit there. That's it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafty videos, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to leave you links to the products in the video description below, as well as to my blog where you can join in on the Newton's Nook Design blog hop, and you can hop along for a chance to win this new set. Thanks for watching. Bye.